30,000 views. That's how many views I got on my most popular video here, which was about the responsive sidebar menu in Angular. So a big thank you to everyone who viewed that and enjoyed it. Now I got a lot of comments on that video and the most asked question was how to load the content in that content area there based on the menu option chosen. So how do you do that? Let's see exactly in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Zeb Khan and welcome back to my channel. So the standard way to load your main content in Angular is to use Angular routing. So let us see how to set up basic routing in your Angular app in simple steps. Let's get started. Step 1. In step 1 we are going to create the pages that will be shown as the content. So let us create and generate component and we're going to create a page for each of our content and we're going to put it in our folder called pages. So we're going to create a home page, a profile page, an about page and also a help page. Lastly, we'll also add a not found page in case no root is found. Great. So as we can see, we have our components here. Step two, we need to specify where exactly to show our content from the roots. So for that, we are going to go in our app.component.html and we can see here that we have our menu and the mat side nav content is here. So we are going to put in the router outlet element here. Now any routes are going to be displayed uh, dynamically loaded right after this router outlet. Okay, so currently it's giving an issue because we are not importing router outlet, but this is going to be fixed in due time. One thing here we want to do is to also remove the styling that we have with main content here. So we're going to go in app.component.cs and in the content we are going to re remove this display flex and all of these things. Okay, great. Okay, now let's add step three. Now in step three, it's best practice to create a separate module for routing. So let's create a module with ng generate module and we usually call it app routing module. Also, we're going to use the flat parameter, which is going to add the module in the root folder instead of its own folder. Great. So we have our app routing module here. So in our app routing module, we are going to add a roots array here. We're going to call it roots. The type will be roots and it's going to be an array. But before filling that in, we are going to import our angular router module here and we're going to use the for root function and specify the roots here. Also, we want to export it from here so that it becomes available in the rest of the app as well. Great. We are also going to double check whether it's being imported fine in our app.module. So since it's not, we are going to add our imports here as well. We are going to see app routing module. Great. And when we add it, you can see that the router outlet error has gone away. Great. So now let's add in step four, we are going to add our roots to our module. So now each of the element here is going to be a root and a root has a path and it also has a component. The component is going to be the associated component with that root. So for the first path, we are going to, for example, give home and the component here would be home component. Similarly, we are going to do the same with profile, about, help. Great, so this covers all of our roots, but we also want to have a default root in case that there is no root specified. So for that, we have to specify an empty path, but we also need to specify a path match here, such as full, so that it matches the whole of the path. And here we're going to just use the redirect property and we're going to redirect to home. Great. Lastly, we also want to add a path or rather a condition where when no root is when an, an invalid root is specified, it navigates to our not found page. So we're here we're going to give not found component. Great. So we have our root specified now. Now let's go on to the last step, which is step five. And we're going to go in our app.component.html and we're going to link our buttons with the roots. To do that, it's very simple. We're going to add a router link here and we're going to specify the root here. Similarly for profile, about and for help. Great, at this point, all of our roots should work. So let's test it out. Great, so let's see. 
so when we click on home we see that the home root is activated and in profile the profile component shows and the about about works here shows okay so this works great now let's also test the default root so if we don't give any root here we're going to be redirected to the home root and similarly if we specify any unspecified root for example not navigated or something like that it's going to show the not found page great so this works now at this point we have our basic routing all set up let's uh, make a few tweaks as well so if for example we go in app.css uh, and we're going to add a padding here of about 16 pixels so that our content is uh, within this and also we remove we make some changes here so that this comes within our so we're going to just change this a bit here to be 130 pixels maybe okay yeah so this looks great and uh, so when we add some long content to any of our pages and let's uh, add this now so for example in our home page let's add a heading and some text and some several line breaks to it okay so there are several line breaks here and a footer here and we want to just test how this looks so if you're going to go in home we can see okay uh, there's some text here in this and so there's a scroll bar here and if we bring it down it acts a bit weird because it moves all of the content page up and then it when you go down and it shows a footer here so it's not this is not exactly how we want it to be so let's actually add a scroll bar to the content area here and let's make it overflow auto great so now the scroll bar is inside of our content here and if there is some long form content we can see that okay it remains inside of this area it does not affect the rest of the content great so this was one tweak now the next is actually an issue that we need to resolve and for that we need to see whether we are in mobile view or not so we are going to go in our mobile view okay and if you go in our menu here and we click on profile you will see that it navigates to profile and we also see that profile works in the background but the menu is not dismissed the menu remains the same now we would want the menu to be dismissed as soon as there is some navigation here now one way to do that would be to go in our app.component.html and we can add some click event handlers in each of these buttons here and we can close the menu as soon as it's uh, selected but there is a better way and that is from uh, using angular router now the angular router gives us an events observable to listen to so let's go in our app.component.ts and we're going to include here the angular router okay and we're going to then add here this dot router dot events so this notifies us whenever a router event is triggered there are now different router events and there are navigation start event navigation end events etc but here we are only interested when a navigation is completed so we are going to use a navigation end event so to get that what we are going to do is we are going to add a pipe to it and we add a filter and in the filter we are going to check whether the event is of type navigation end because we only want to get the subscription here when the event is of navigation end and when we have this what we are going to do is we are going to check if our side nav dot mode dot mode is equals to over that is it is in mobile mode then it's just going to close the side nav okay great let's test this out and when we go in our side nav and we click on profile we can see that the menu goes away we click on about the menu goes away and in help the menu goes away great and it works the same as before on the normal desktop sizes now this all works great but as a best practice we also need to unsubscribe from any such subscriptions here otherwise they can be observable leaks so we're going to add a handy little library called ng neat until destroy here ng add ng neat until destroy great so it's added now as you can see in our package okay ng and, and destroy and all we have to do here is to just add a decorator for and to destroy here and we're going to add alongside the filter we're going to add an until destroyed this here here great so let's test this out again great so our app works the same as before and it looks fine 
since we are uh, adding the until destroyed here we can also add the until destroyed here because this is also a subscription and it's nice to cover everything and this makes everything better so there you have it basic route navigation added to your angular app and hopefully this helps out beginners who were looking for ways to add content to your app and use this sidebar in their future projects I hope this was helpful and if it was, please consider subscribing to my channel so that I can keep posting videos like this. Thanks for watching.